Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? Hello, hello, happy Saturday. Uh, I know that I have been awful with keeping to my streaming schedule, and uh, I'll apologize in advance for the upcoming week. Got a lot of fun stuff going on, and I will not be able to stream until probably next Sunday. So um, I, I I wanted to hop in today uh, since, you know, if I can't do Sunday, then I'll try to do Saturdays. And uh, like I said, next week's going to be a little a little crazy for me, but I just thought it'd be worth coming in, hanging out, talking about all of the really, really cool, exciting things that are going on in the world of crypto and crypto gaming. Uh, obviously, we have a heavy focus on Splinterlands and Parallel here. Uh, the Prime token has been hitting new all-time highs. In fact, a lot of gaming tokens have been hitting new all-time highs. So that has been fantastic. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It's just been fan freaking tastic uh but you know interesting stuff going on in the splinterlands side of things and i'm sure we can get into it we've been we've had about a week plus <clears throat> a little bit more than a week of this new um well we'll call it like ranked play and i don't know what the team has kind of in store for march uh but hopefully we'll get i believe it is the next town hall this upcoming week yeah so we are we are a couple of days away from the next town hall which should be on the 14th if i remember correctly let me just double check and make sure that they haven't changed anything do 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 yes march 14th at 10 a.m oh it's a morning one so that should be good um very very excited for that uh so let's let's kind of just reset see where everything is at for the moment um and we can jump into uh, Splinter Cards here. And then I actually want to go over to CoinGecko because it's it's crazy out there. I mean, it, it feels like alt season is like just itching to happen in so many ways. And I, you know, Bitcoin hit 70K, it was it yesterday or two days ago? And now, you know, uh, some, some of these other new tokens are hitting all time highs, right? Which again, not unexpected this is exactly what we've been talking about and exactly the struggle that i i've been saying splinter lens is going to have right it's not new and shiny but you know that being said we're doing uh, we're, we're we're in there <laughs> i don't want to say we're we're doing great i mean we're there right um and there's been a lot of interesting feedback on the new um on, on the new kind of ranked play and what that might what that might offer and who that might attract but uh, let's see. So 68K is where Bitcoin is sitting at. ETH is about 39. Uh, within Splinterlands, we are doing well. We, we stay mostly around peg now, which is fantastic. Uh, SPS is sitting above three cents, which is great. I don't think we've seen any reason for that to come down recently. Uh, we've also seen a good amount of DEC or, uh, get minted. So we're at 5.6 billion now. You can you can tell this chart goes back uh, four months. So at this point, February, January, December, November, right? So this this is probably like early November at this point. And uh, this thing is up and to the right. Now, the good thing is that I'm sure a good chunk of this is getting either burned or thrown into the down. What we don't know, oh, actually, we can't track it here, although I haven't really been looking. There is a burned section, right? So we can see how much has been burned, 1.3 billion. And then, uh, of course, the Dow, you know, this has been slowly going up as we see certain pack sales uh, happening over time. Now, the exciting thing, uh, which, you know, may not impact people directly, is that Hive is up. So Hive jumped up about 40 cents. You can see here we're at 43 cents now. And I say that this is important, uh, at least peripherally, because any kind of marketing or, you know, it's not even marketing because we'll, marketing will, will come through all the, all the numbers going up. But any kind of support and validation that Hive can get as a blockchain uh, will be very helpful for Splinterlands and any of the other games that launch on Hive, right? And, you know, obviously the team is trying to launch uh, a bunch more with the Invenium plat platform. Um, so I, I would say if Hive can, you know, start to reach its previous all-time highs or look to be competitive, <clears throat> and, and we're going to check, we're going to check on this in a minute. In fact, maybe we should check on it now. Let's do, let's do coin market cap. 
excuse me. All right. So uh, let's check Hive real quick. And the reason I like Coin Market Cap better is uh, only because of Splinterlands. <laughs> they have the correct market cap for Splinterlands here, while Coin Gecko does not. So I'm just playing favorites uh, for that reason. But um, you can see here, how come they don't have the rank here? I think I saw 300, right? Oh gosh, do they not have it there? All right, let's just type it in again. So Hive is literally at number 300. And um, you know what would be interesting to do? Sorry, I'm, I'm going to go down this rabbit hole now. So you guys will just have to come with me. Let's actually go to this. Wow. All right. This has got to be my computer being super slow. My computer, is my this laptop that I stream from is slowly starting to degrade now. <laughs> so I'm glad the bull run is here because I'm finally going to be forced to buy a new one. The certain buttons on the keyboard have stopped working. So it's funny. I, I got this uh, ma or not manual, but like uh, separate keyboard that I have to use now with it. But I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna ride this thing to the ground because I'm I'm trying to stack as many sats as possible uh, until I absolutely need. A new keyboard or not <clears throat> excuse me not a new keyboard but a new um a new laptop so let's see all right interestingly enough it is not at 300 let's check four there it is it's at 302 so now we can get the market cap 200 million 218 million and what i want to do with that is actually head back to page one because I want to see what this looks like as a uh, what's that called like top 100 token where where we would need to be in order for it to be considered a top 100 token so if we go all the way back down once again all right so we were at 200 million right 218 million so in order for it to pass we makes and be a top 100 token we would need to get to we'll just say 1.1 billion let me run the math real quick i know it's about 5x but i want to be i want to be precise here so 1.1 billion divided by 218 so okay clean 5x pretty much 5.04x which would put hive times what 43 cents is where we're at right now that would put hive you know above two bucks two dollars and 15 ish cents roughly now, is that going to happen? I, I don't know. But um, obviously, we hit $3, I think it was last time. I don't know. I want to check. So, uh, again, the, re the reason I'm, I'm kind of harping on this is because there's so many L1s available out there. And so many, like, smoother, faster, sexier L1s. Oh, we're at 45 cents. So, check it. I mean, that's going to be even higher. Um, and you know, that fighting that fighting that fight is not going to be easy for hive, which doesn't have like, you know, a foundation. It doesn't have a marketing team. It's, it's decentralized. So it has some value in that sense, but it's kind of like oligarchical in nature where, you know, a lot of people that avoid it mainly because, you know, it's just, it's just whales at the top, which is true for, which is true for any and all projects. Right. But with hive, a lot of the things that you can do, right. That hive is good at is is the social media side and being able to silence people upvote downvote you know kind of with your friends is very different from holding like you know being a whale in eth versus being a whale uh, or or in bitcoin for example like you're not you're not impacting the community in a large way outside of the normal you know buying and selling or whatever that you might do um so well check that chart out all right so we started talking about hive and everybody started selling fantastic Uh, okay, so I think we covered most of the things. Vouchers are still up. I mean, this is still a fantastic deal, I think, for many people who are paying for energy. I have not yet, but I would love to see this go up higher. It, you know what's been fantastic, though? You know, Matt I, Matt and team, I feel, are really delivering on this whole, you know, make vouchers scarce again. And that does get me excited to see where voucher values could go in the future. Again, this is not financial advice. I would definitely not be somebody who's trying to flip vouchers right because that just isn't that seems silly but if you hold assets within the game specifically sps and um and uh what's that called node licenses then you're good and 
even indirectly. Think about it this way. You could hold cards or land, which can earn you SPS, right? Cards directly earn you SPS, which again, then indirectly leads to vouchers. So we would want that value to go up over time and to really truly be scarce once again. So we're sitting at about 12.1 million. Um, you know, this is this is going to be a tricky. Hmm, this is going to be a tricky thing to to kind of explore here because I I, I want to know how how do we get to a point where all this stuff gets burned? <laughs> right? I want there to be like one million vouchers only. And granted, I know we need some in the. Um, I know we need some in the. Oh gosh, what's that called? liquidity pool, right? But there's a there's a proposal right now to reduce that amount, which should hopefully reduce the amount that people are holding there. And if the value of vouchers go up, then liquidity actually rises without the token or without the, the token quantity needing to go up. So that that's my hope with all the stuff as we move forward on the voucher side, you can see SPS we've burned 56 million, 56.2. So this has been rising quite nicely over the past couple of uh, months, whatever it is. Um, where were we here? 44 million back January 10th. So this goes about back about 60 days. And so we've burned 12 million over the last two months. That's not a terrible pace. I mean, when you think about it, was that six, six million a month, roughly, right? Because a lot of the hype was done. Uh, you know what? Maybe not. Uh, uh, well, you know, we'll say a lot of hype, a lot of the hype was done in, 2023, right? With land starting up and with the pre-sale and general sale launch of Rebellion. Since then, yes, have we did we get the conflicts going live in January? We did. But I, I can kind of roll that up into like, hey, we're we're just gonna be moving through this and turning through. So six million a month. Again, if SPS does not go up, then we have what nine more months? Nine times six was that 54, 54 million throughout the rest of the year. I mean, that's not, that's not very much. And that, and that only happens if SPS does not increase in value over time. So definitely don't want to see that. Uh, with packs, we're sitting at about 820,000. So I haven't done the run rate on this recently, but you know, that doesn't seem like it's moving at any kind of significant pace. Uh, no licenses. Paying out decently well with SPS up to three cents and vouchers up as well. So that looks good. And then, you know, GLX, meh. And um, no, I just haven't been good about playing these other games except for part <laughs> or except for TerraCore. So I'll need to, to jump back in at some point. All right. So what I want to do is head back to, to Coin Market Cap. I don't know. Coin Market Cap feels slower than Coin Gecko. So I'm sorry. Uh, no, no. Let's let's stay with Coin Market Cap. Um, and I want to jump into the gaming side, but I, I didn't forget about you guys. I'm going to jump into the comments here in a second before we do this. So let me just load that up. Bro, what's going on? Good to see you here. Uh, Plato Zero says... Yeah, you think we are in full bull now or not yet? Um, yes, I, I think we are in full bull, but you have to understand like full bull means we are in like the early parts of the bull run. So, you know, okay, there's a couple of ways to look at this. If you if you think that like we're on an accelerated timeline and, and in, in a way we are, right? Because we hit a new all, all time high before the halving then you can kind of place us at December of 2020, right? A couple months before, um, you know, we went on a full on run and had a, you know, we topped out in like April or May. So like five months later, we had like euphoria. And then there was like a second top, you know, another six months or so after that. I don't know, if, you know, history often repeats uh, or it doesn't, you know, repeat, but it often rhymes is the saying. The other way to look at it, and I think that this is... I think there's a lot of valid points that come from this is when you look at the 2021 bull run, um, a lot of people think that what happened in April, May, when we crashed, right? So there was just a very coordinated set of attacks on 
crypto on Bitcoin specifically, right? So you had the Elon Musk tweet about energy. You had China banning it. You just had this crazy, crazy sell-off. We went from like 64,000 down to 32,000 within a matter of days or something like that. It, it was it was insane, right? It was insane to watch. And so a lot of people look at that and believe that it kind of muted the, uh, the bull run. And so... You look at the stock to flow that plan B had put out and, and others, right? You look at a lot of the, the logarithmic charts for Bitcoin and it's like, well, you know, 100K wasn't just pulled out of thin air. Granted, okay, we have to assume everything is pulled out of thin air, but 100K on that logarithmic chart was not pulled necessarily out of thin air. So part of the, part of the thinking goes, well, maybe <laughs> because it was so muted, it was so blunted by what happened we should have been higher, meaning that crossing 70K earlier this week wouldn't have been breaking the previous all-time high if it had been allowed to go to the point where it was last cycle uh, or where we should have gone last cycle, which means that let's say 100K is the new all-time high. Okay, so, so just work with me here. Let's say 100K is the new all-time high uh, or was, sorry, was the previous all-time high, meaning that now that you know we're, we're back in the early throes of things it does kind of feel like may or you know maybe june of 2024 or sorry 2020 um where we're gonna have this long year-long thing that goes for a while because it's not until we get 100k that we are in full like oh this is new price discovery mode territory and again, that's not from a human market perception. That's literally from like the, the stock to flow kind of uh, analysis. And again, <clears throat> all this stuff, guys, I don't know what I'm talking about. So none of this is financial advice. All I'm saying is when you when you look at all these different things, it's like, okay, to answer your question, to get back to this Plato Zero, are we in a full bull now or not yet? Yeah, I mean, I think we're in a bull run. Uh, there's, there's no denying that. Like, okay, <laughs> let's put it this way. Bitcoin is in a bull run. So, um, you know, can that be said for every other project in crypto? Not really. Can it be said for Splinterlands? Definitely not right now, right? Uh, I think there's a lot of exciting things happening with Splinterlands, but Bitcoin is in a bull run and a lot of the other tokens are following suit. <clears throat> so for, for example, right? And this is, this is what I talk about, uh, in a lot of the other, um, in a, in a lot of the other live streams that I've done, we are going to have to see if these coins tokens from previous uh previous runs are able to match what they did right so you look at immutable you look at floki you look at axie infinity these are all very far away from their all-time highs from a token or uh, token price perspective but also probably from a market cap perspective but you have newer ones here right such as beam which i was happy to jump into that is hitting new all-time highs prime is doing phenomenal i mean this thing hit uh, a new it's hitting new all-time highs every day right and uh pixels i think is another one so again the new projects are popping off i don't think that's new to anybody right alluvium i think this hit like what thousand dollars last time which is uh, absolutely outrageous but all of these new games are hitting you all time highs. And guess what? That that narrative matters, right? That narrative puts us in the, yes, we are in a bull market now. Early early parts of a bull market. But um, I would say we are we are in a full bull now. All right. Uh, let's see here. Vlogging and coding. What's going on? It's been some time since I had to change to participate in hang chat. Oh, well, yeah, I know, guys. It's 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 been a little nuts for me. Um, in, in a good way, right? It's just uh, this this year has been <laughs> this year has been fun. I've, I've gotten a lot of opportunities to do some some fun stuff uh, outside of crypto, and I've just been taking it up. And a lot of that has been interspersed with family things. So I apologize that I've not been able to do you know the live streams as much as possible. And in fact, I'm almost, I'm almost thinking about like changing the schedule. I know I'm gonna have to change the intro, which I haven't changed the intro in like years. <laughs> but it's like if I change the schedule up to something that I can be consistent with, I think people would be able to at least know when I'm going live rather than it being this ad hoc thing. But uh, thank you for hanging out regardless. I appreciate you. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but thank you for being here. I suspect bull trap. My theory is that people with money will milk mainly U.S. citizens because tax season is almost here. You know, um, so I don't disagree that we... I, I, I wouldn't call it a bull trap, 
necessarily. Um, because I do think that, you know, we are we are in price discovery mode for Bitcoin right now. So I, I would say that, you know, it is a bull run. But what people tend to forget is that every bull run, every like major bull run that Bitcoin has had, there have been like five to six 30 percent drops um, from the all time from, from like the, the high right on the way up. And you can go back and, you know, every, every chart 2013, uh, I don't know about 2013, but 2017, 2021, uh, throughout those times, we had it. And so like when we hit 69K, like a 30% drop from there, I think was like 48, 49,000. So that's the crazy thing. Obviously the numbers get larger, even, you know, the percentage stays the same, but the numbers get larger as Bitcoin goes up. So I remember I was talking to some folks um, after we hit 69K earlier this week, and I was, and, and like we hit 69K and then if you remember, we dropped down to 59 and we were sat at 59 for like a day. And uh, I was talking with some some friends who are yeah, newer like ish to crypto. And I was like, okay, understand this 30% thing. We could still go down into the low 50s or even high 40s. And that would be normal. And we would still be considered in a bull run, right? Just based on previous uh, history. And like, you know, again, for people who are newer to that, it's just like, oh, this thing can drop $20,000 and still be, you know, considered in a bull run. That's, that's absolutely crazy. And it's like, yeah, again. Yeah, you know, not past performance isn't indicative of future returns, but we, you know, we have to use some kind of model. So I will say this: every time we've gone down, the the dips get eaten up so fast, right? But the Bitcoin dips this this uh, this cycle seem to have like no chill. Like they they literally just go right back up. We were down to fifty nine in a day, and then by the next day we we're up in the sixty five. And I think within two days we were back up, like hitting, hitting at sixty eight, sixty nine. Same thing happened when we hit seventy. Uh, yesterday, right? We hit 70 and then dropped down to 65, 66. And then all of a sudden here we are, we're chilling at 68 once again. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if some major shakeouts happen, major dips happen, especially if we start to, you know, really run. And, you know, there's there's a lot of tinfoil hats about what's going on with uh, with Coinbase right now in terms of it's, uh, you know, they're, they're always having trading issues whenever, whenever Bitcoin starts to rip up. And a lot of people believe that is... That is them trying to help Wall Street accumulate more before this thing can happen. But it's like, man, every time there is a massive sell-off, it gets eaten up so fast. Uh, and so that's that's just something we haven't really seen in a bull market before, right? In a bull market, we've seen healthy-ish corrections, right? And what, what I mean by healthy is like 30% corrections multiple times. So I believe that that can still happen. We just haven't seen it yet which makes people feel even more bullish in some ways um, because the appetite is there, right? Dude, the the statistic I was reading the other day is we're adding a hundred, uh, sorry, we're adding one trillion to the US debt here every 100 days. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of other currencies versus Bitcoin we're hitting new all-time highs. I mean, fiat, fiat is is failing, right? And obviously, the dollar is going to get stronger before it gets weaker. Uh, the dollar is going to be the predator to all other currencies out there, just because it is the global reserve uh, currency. But you know, it's it's like the the dollar is the shark, and you know, the rest of the currencies are all these little fish and plankton, or not plankton, but just like you know, tiny fish that shark is just the shark is just eating up. And then you have the killer whale, um, yeah, pun intended. Yeah. We're, we're a couple days away from the killer whales launch uh but you but then you have the, the killer whale that is like kind of behind the shark and you know that's that's bitcoin essentially being the killer whale that's going to eat the dollar uh so i don't know how i don't know how it'll play out but uh i do know that i want to hold as much bitcoin as possible bitcoin sig what's going on here for the live stream nice thanks for stopping by i appreciate you our essence of an anarchy uh, I'm looking forward to the bull run to really kick in so I can buy a new desktop PC. Mine's about 10 years old and I just bought an indie game and then realized I couldn't even launch it too old. Yeah, I mean, my, my stuff is old. I, I usually ride stuff until it, uh, you know, I ride it into the ground. But, um, you know, with a new bull run and hopefully we'll uh, hopefully I'll have a chance to, to level up the, the streaming game here if I get a better, a little bit of a better setup. DJ is in the house. What's going on? Uh, you know, I finally participated in the sacrifice round uh, for... Uh, what's that called? The push and shove token. So thanks again, DJ, for all the help and for connecting Crypto Eater and I. That was a great cha uh, great conversation. Bitcoin say, did you see the gaming promo video for Immutable X? Hive needs to up their gaming game. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Hive doesn't have a gaming game. Hive doesn't have anything. 
right? We wouldn't like, there's nobody creating stuff for Hive uh, as opposed to Immutable. But to answer your question, no, I have not seen it, but other games, I, I mean, gaming across the ecosystem looks crazy right now. In fact, here, I want to share something with, uh, with you guys about this. And, you know, um, well, let's, I think it's blockchaingamer.biz. Yeah. So here's a publication that I, I just recently, yeah, I think through, uh, what's that called? Through the Soul Keep uh, Dev Diaries, <clears throat> found this. But there was something here that I read this morning. Here we go. Look at this. Pixels hits 1.1 million players. Heroes of Mobby. I just downloaded downloaded this on my phone, so I need uh, to explore a little bit further. Uh, but this hits 2.6 monthly active users. Insane. Insane numbers that are happening in crypto gaming right now. And I'll tell you this. I, I don't know these games very well. But I, I believe that a lot of these players aren't just like gaming purist web two games, right? I do believe a lot of them would be candidates that would would want to be in something like Splinterlands. But here we are with about you know roughly twenty five hundred to three thousand real players versus you know one point one and two point six. So um, you know th th this is what I'm talking about. Like when you when you see the rest of the world, when you take off your Splinterlands goggles and you see the rest of the the gaming industry. Uh, it should concern you if you're a big Splinterlands fan. I'm just saying. Oh, shoot. Did I not even... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Somehow I opened a new tab. All right, let me try that again. I'll close out of this. Uh, okay, blockchaingamer.biz. All right, so we're going to go back down. And here, uh, you know, four days ago, five days ago, Pixels hits 1.1 million players since launching. And they got Heroes of Mavia hitting uh, 2.6 million. So Heroes of Mavia, I just downloaded the game. Uh, there's an app for, for iPhone. So I will be testing that out and wanting to better understand how the ecosystem works. Because I, I, I don't really want to just play a Web 2 game. Um, I, I want to... I, I'm looking... So uh, I'll be I'll be very you know transparent with you guys. A lot of the reason that I'm into crypto game, a lot of the reason that I got into Splinterlands in the first place, and I've said this before, is the money. Okay, it was it was and is still an investment for me. Do I like the game? Yes. Do I like the community? Absolutely. But was that my primary goal for coming in? No. <laughs> right? Is that my primary goal for necessarily staying? Uh, it's kind of getting there, right? Um, I, I've been able to do quite well with Splinterlands. I'll be honest. Uh, but you know, my my biggest bag this this gaming run is not Splinter. It's not SPS. Like uh, so, I, I I'm back in like full. All right, we're we're in bull mode right now. There's a lot of fantastic, crazy things that are happening in the ecosystem. And um, I, I, I stream here because I love the game. I love you guys and the community. And, um, you know, my, my hope is that we can play Splinterlands, obviously a bunch, and then, you know, find a bunch of other cool games. I still can't wait for Arcade Calling. But, man, I was talking with um, I was talking with, with Keys the other day. And, I don't know, we, we were both just kind of bummed out <laughs> we're we're both kind of bummed out by the slowness of the the launch for i i don't know i don't know maybe maybe we're just going through it we were just having like a rough day but i, I was like really frustrated because i'm just like man you know our uh, arcade colony and moon carts is it looks so good right but execution execution is going to be so important can they do it are they doing it fast enough? Are they going to miss the boat, right? Because in my mind, you know, a Aggie, you know, laid out the roadmap and then said they wanted to get all the stuff done, you know, within the next two weeks to two months. And he kind of like listed it out as like, this is ideal. This is, you know, medium. This is bad. And this is, oh shit, right? Oh shit was out at like two months. It was like two week increments. And I'm like, man, at, at this point, like we're trending for oh shit, <laughs> like that's gonna put us, that's gonna put us at the end of April or like early May. And um, you know, you're, you're seeing games pop off right now. I, I know, like we live in our little bubble here, but you're seeing games pop off right now. Like the, the, you know, Prime hitting new all time highs uh, is has been uh, again another eye opener for me. Um, you know, Beam is is up there now as a platform that I think is gonna rival Immutable. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, Gala is up to 5.6 cents, right? Here's the thing. Remember when Gala and SPS were both sitting at two cents, right? They were the same. They were the same. And you would look at Gala and you would think, man, this has so many more tokens. It has a way higher market cap. Like, you know, what's going on there? Yet Gala is now almost double the price of SPS. Ask, your, ask yourself that question, right? 
why is that the case ronin's doing pretty good um and then where's is, is the mavia thing here here's a mavia because i want to understand the token out mix there too here's a mavia let's see how's this one going i've heard nothing but good things about this game so oh all right so there's only 250 million circulating supplies only 30 million yikes that's low and it's not even listed on a major exchange yet check that holy moly okay i need to learn more about this uh all right let me jump back into chat riff summoner what's up do you have a plan for push uh i don't have i mean i don't know i'm gonna hold it and trade it buy and sell <clears throat> um i'm hoping that i mean I, I don't know. I don't know what your question is asking. I, I don't have a plan for push. I sacrifice some SPS because I wanted to be part of the project. I hope it goes to the moon. Uh, I'll talk about it here. And, you know, if it gets crazy, then I'll talk about it on X, <laughs> right? Because it benefits Splinterlands. I, I, I mean it when I said I'm like, oh, it's it's a it's a meme token that has um, has utility because it benefits a very specific project in a game. Um, but plans for it no i want to get rich i want to i want to turn my i think i put i sacrificed like i don't know a couple thousand sps it was not much but i threw that in i'll get whatever i get oh but if you saw matt put in one hundred and fifty thousand sps which is which is outrageous <laughs> that's actually pretty awesome um so i like what crypto eater is trying to do i think that there is a lot of potential with it i you know what i'm most excited about the success of push benefits uh, benefits SPS by locking up a lot of it in the LP. And so I think that that could be, you know, um, that could provide a lot of value over time because if push goes up and SPS kind of stays the same, then there's more SPS that gets locked up in the, uh, in the liquidity pool. And, uh, I, I know it's not locked lock and obviously, you know, meme coins tend to sell as well, but it could make things interesting. Uh, I forgot the way that the tokenomics work, but you know, there's there's some burning that gets involved there. There's some you know purchasing stuff within the game that gets involved there. So um, yeah, I, I'm excited for it. I want to see you know, Crypto Eater seems very uh, you know enthusiastic and has been very on top of it. Uh, also, I saw the Star Atlas sold a five million dollar spaceship. No doubt, the full bowl. There you go. Yeah, see, that's another one that I wanted to get into, but haven't had a chance yet. All right, I think that the bowl really either stall either runs or stalls after the having yeah so okay keep in mind we're in 2024 right now so if you proxy that to 2020 um and let's let's actually go and use history as our guide talking about bitcoin here specifically right <clears throat> all right i don't know I, I don't think it's my computer i think it's coin market cap because coin gecko is not this low so let's look at all and then can i like copy a time frame here actually we, we don't need to so check this out right 2019 rolls around that's like the 2023 proxy for us then we get into um we get into 2020, right? Uh, obviously, we had this major dip here for COVID. People don't remember. That was four years ago now, which is nuts. Uh, this is March of 2020, which is crazy. But then we have this rise up uh, over the summer, which, again, at that point in time, we're sitting at like only 10, 11K, right? Like th this is like June through um, through August, right? And we're, we're just ranging between, you know, 9 and 11K uh, for that month, even into September, right? Uh, even into October, we're only at like 11K. And then in, you know, late October, November is when things start to take off. So what, what is my point in showing this? We're ranging around, you know, just, just a couple thousand uh, here, which again could translate to ranging between like, you know, 60 and 70 or 50 and 60 or so, something like that, right? It could be a larger range now just from a percentage, but percentage standpoint stays the same. During that time in 2020, you had DeFi summer. So you had all these decentralized finance projects that absolutely took off, right? Uniswap, uh, Wire and Finance, like all the, you know, Compound, 
Ave, all these projects like either launched or they took off and it was it was crazy. So Bitcoin was not even at a new all-time high yet, but it popped up enough after the halving where people uh, and, and we just got into this moment post having where the narrative was there and you just had projects, you know, uh, that had breathing room. Bitcoin provided them some breathing room. I would say that Bitcoin is early at this point in time in providing breathing room simply because we've already hit, you know, new all time high. If you want to just look at it straight from a numbers perspective and we could chop the rest of the summer, for example, right? <clears throat> Um, we get through the halving and maybe we just stay in the 60, 70 range, right? Maybe not. We, maybe we don't even go back up into the 70 range. Maybe we just stay here for the next five months, right? Until, until the end of summer. But even with Bitcoin chopping, all of these other narratives are going to start to take off, right? There's a lot of AI tokens that I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, there's a lot of gaming tokens that uh, I'm looking at or hold, right? And I do believe that those are the two strongest narratives right now and have the potential to really take off over the summer. Now, <clears throat> is that going to be the best time? Is that going to be like the full on bull run? Probably not. But I think if you start to see some games popping off and, and again, this is what I'm trying to get at here. We are in a bull run because the games are already popping off, right? You're hitting new all time highs for all of these different games. These games are pulling in millions of users, pixels, heroes of Mavia, right? I was just looking at, uh, I was just looking at, at the the prime statistics, for example, for for uh, parallel, and I believe there's there's only like there's twelve thousand holders in that project, twelve twelve thousand unique wallets holding that project, which is again not a lot of people. Granted, it's a very niche type of game, right? Uh, any any kind of TCG is going to be super niche, but man, twelve thousand, and this thing is already hitting you all time highs. It's a five hundred million dollar market cap. Open beta just went live. Oh, yeah. And they're working on a new game called Parallel Colony, which looks fantastic. I mean, I don't know. To me, I'm just like the the, the gaming narrative is going to take off over the summer, whether or not Bitcoin wants to be uh, a part of that. And then if we stop chopping, then, you know, Bitcoin will continue to do its thing late 2024 into 2025 when maybe we have our blow off top. And where does that land? I don't know. 100K, 150K, 500K. I've, I have no idea. Right. But at that point is when things get silly. Uh, so we can definitely have an alt season run before Bitcoin starts to really take off, which I think is, is exciting. Yo, Icy Flow, what's going on? Good to see you here. Uh, no, I have not tried Cypher yet. I'm sorry. It's just I, I know I say I want to do all these things. and I, I promise that I do. Just haven't had a chance yet. Hello. Uh, what's up, uh, Bolts? What's going on? Uh, back to good old crypto crazy days. I indeed. Uh, Plato says, love the analysis. Thanks. Glad to have more perspective in my life. Oh, thanks for the question, Plato. Uh, again, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. I just, I've lived through two of these cycles, right? I bought my first Bitcoin and understood it. And, uh, you know, I was explaining this to someone yesterday. Um, I bought my first Bitcoin in 2017, but I didn't become a believer until 20, like late 2020. Meaning like in, in 2017, I was, I was in it for the money, right? I bought Bitcoin. I was like, oh, I heard this thing can go to hundred thousand someday. Right. Um, and I'm just going to hold it for 10 years. But in 2020 is when I started understanding more of like the macroeconomic outlook. I started doing my research, reading up on it and just exploring more. I mean, a lot, a lot of the Bitcoin maxis like dive into this, right? They were all calling, you know, inflation is going to be silly in 2021 back in 2020. And like, I watched that play out perfectly right i watched that play out perfectly then throughout all of 2021 inflation's high the fed is saying inflation is transitory and then you have all the bitcoin maxis laughing and saying like no it's not <laughs> no it's not they're gonna have to raise rates at some point q november of 2021 so you know whether whether or not you like bitcoin maxis um you know some of them can be super toxic to me the the economic analysis that they provide is uh i i, I haven't seen them be wrong yet were they wrong on like everybody putting laser eyes and trying to get to 100k bitcoin yeah but that's price prediction that's not that's not economic analysis when you look at what's happening now you know all the different all the different um governments that are printing money we have uh you know on march 11th we have the the bank term funding program that's going to be ending that was essentially a backstop for um for all the banks that were failing a year ago right I talked about this briefly in a recent live stream and what they did, right? So this is this is March of a year ago. So check this. If we just look at the one-year chart, for example, March of last year, we saw all these banks 
uh, being the, all these banks that started to fail. So the Fed, right, did not want to just bail them out or the U.S. government didn't want to just bail them out. What they did is they started providing them kind of like a behind closed doors stimulus where if they, you know, they were all down. I mean, they still are down on their treasuries, right? Uh, all their treasury holdings, meaning it's just like, okay, so they people deposit money. You deposit like a hundred bucks and you did that back in 2021. What was the safe thing for them to do, especially because the Fed was telling them that inflation is transitory, they're not going to raise interest rates. They bought U.S. Treasuries, right, so that they could earn a, I don't know, three percent interest, whatever interest rate it was. So they spent your hundred dollars on that Treasury. Then they started raising interest rates, and not just raising, they like maxed them out and raced as quickly as possible from zero percent to like five percent, whatever it was, like within a year. It was nuts the amount of rate hikes that they did. They were trying to break something, and they did. They broke several banks. And when that happened, right, then they came in on the back end because all these banks, uh, you know, Silicon Valley, Signature, all of them, like, well, Silicon Valley was obviously the big one, but they had your deposit of $100, but they went turn around and bought treasuries, right? And then the value of those treasuries plummeted because interest rates went up. So all of a sudden, like, you deposited $100, the bank took your $100, and to be safe, right, because they were told that this is the same thing to do, they went and they bought a... Um, you know, they, they went in and bought treasuries. And uh, again, I'm, I'm just using rough numbers here. I don't know the exact. So, you know, this is all uh, this is all just like directionally correct. Uh, but somebody please correct me if I'm wrong. They took your hundred bucks. They bought these treasuries. And then all of a sudden, because interest rates went up, the value of the treasuries went down. So now they have your hundred dollars sitting in treasuries. That's only worth 75. And guess what? When you come back and you want your hundred dollars back, they have to sell that treasury at seventy five dollars and they are out of luck because they don't, they can't cover the other 25. And so you had that bank run on Silicon Valley Bank and a lot of people were getting worried about other, you know, other banks being underwater. In fact, even still this past week, New York Community Bank, if you look at that stock, it went from $10 to less than $2 in a day. They had to halt trading several times, right? Why? It's because they needed a cash infusion. So we are now two days away from the bank term funding pro, oh, sorry, I'm cutting ahead here. Sorry for the, sorry for the macro lesson, but I, I just find this stuff fascinating. So what did, they, what did they do? They put in the BTFP a year ago. They said they would let it run for a year. And what that did was allow these banks to, if they needed, right? If all of a sudden they had people that were redeeming their $100 plus interest, right? For, for, for keeping their money in the bank at a savings account or checking account, whatever it is. They were allowed to go to, you know, the Fed or whoever, whoever it was and say, hey, you know what? I bought $100 worth of treasuries. Um, I need to sell it now, but I can't sell it for 75 on the market. Can I sell it back to you for the value that I purchased it at, right? The, 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 the face value plus the interest that should be owed on me. And the Fed said yes. And to me, that's crazy because that's a bailout that's only available to banks, right? If you if you're holding bonds in like your your retirement accounts or you know random people holding bonds or companies holding bonds in their retirement or not retirement accounts, but like in their in their treasuries. You can't do that. Like that's a privilege only for the banks at that point. And so they were able to do that, which is essentially money printing again, just on the back end, right? Because the stimulus is only going to banks and only when they need it. But look at what happened to Bitcoin over this time. Boom, 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 boom. We ju it's just been up and to the right, right? Because that stimulus was happening on the back end. So that, so, okay, not just wrap this all up. That program is ending on Monday. And once it's done, I don't know if we're going to start to see banks start to fall again. But if they do, what, what happens then? Do they re-implement this program? Do they just give, you know, straight out stimulus and bailouts to everything that starts to fail? I, I don't know. But, you know, the fact that New York Community Bank went down the other day, uh, sorry, did not go down, but like their stock price just absolutely plunged, uh, makes me, I don't want to say excited because that's not the right word. We are definitely heading into very uncertain times that could be very bad. But I'm I'm on edge here, kind of wondering what is going to happen once this program is done and as we get into the later parts of the year, if they decide not to extend it and if all these banks, if they decide not to lower interest rates, right? Because these banks are still heavily underwater. All right. So I see flow says, I agree. Musk stifled the last bull run, caused a sell off uh, when the market should have peaked, creating a double top. Yeah, it was definitely interesting because it wasn't just him, right? He he like said that and then, you know, there was a massive sell-off. Then China like banned Bitcoin 
again for like the 50th time, but this time like they, they try to be serious about it, right? So it's just like all this FUD just started hitting in, like the energy stuff, like, I don't know. I'm expecting some crazy volatility after the halving and a flash crash. Yeah, again, I wouldn't be surprised if we see 30% uh, retracements. DJ past performance isn't indicative of future performance is for stocks, not BTC. That's uh, true. Uh, I can't see the site. I think that was, man, I'm, I'm way behind on chat. Sorry, guys. Uh, Vilsin, what's going on? Or actually, no, I'm caught up on chat. Everybody just stopped talking, which I guess is fine. I'm going too much into the macro. My bad. All right, Bitcoin 6 says, name of the IMX video is IMX is going to dominate Web3 Gaming in 2024. Hype trailer. Okay, I will check that out. I'm not, I'm not going to check it out uh, here on stream, but I will check it out after this. Would you guys want me to do um, reaction videos to this stuff? I see people doing that on YouTube all the time. But I don't even think I'd have the... Oh, I, could, I guess I could use StreamYard to like pull in the audio. Maybe, maybe we'll start doing some of that five time. Um, discussing split alliance. What's going on? Vilson says Solana is doing great. Yeah. How's the, how's the scene on Solana gaming wise? Uh, is there a lot going on there? I mean, Solana's at 150 bucks almost, man. Was this, the, this thing was down. Was it close to 15? I remember when it was at 20, but you know, for an L1 to do almost a 10 X at this point, at this point in the cycle, it's kind of crazy. So, um, happy for all the hardcore believers in Solana. I'm sure that was not easy to hit the buy button or hold through that. I do not hold any Solana or at least any significant Solana. I'm sure I have some sitting in a wallet somewhere from my stepping days, but, uh, that's about it. Um, okay. Let's see. William says, who would have thought ranked could be so unplayable? too late to back who would have thought rank could be so unplayable so william okay I, this is the feedback that i was hoping for in that video what league are you playing in um because i i mean it's been playable ish for me in fact you know what i kind of kind of want to play a game right now so let's see why am i logged out that was weird Oh no, did I, dude, I, you know what I need? I literally need to stop entering tournaments. This is so dumb. I just, I just don't put my teams in and I did so well there too. I made it to the second round and I didn't put anybody in the second round. Okay. I don't, does anybody know why these are free entry now? What's the deal with this? I, I don't want them to be free, but I also didn't want them to be, to be paid in SPS necessarily. I was hoping they would use vouchers. Uh, I haven't been following whatever Playboy has been up to. So there's that. Um, yeah, so why, why is Rank so unplayable? I've heard wait times in Modern are getting bad. Um... But I'll be honest, I don't think I've had a single instance of no suitable match found this entire season. And I play in gold, like high gold, low diamond. And my assumption is that that's probably where most of the player base is. So it would make sense that I'm not seeing that. Uh, whereas I'm sure people at the higher levels probably are, are struggling. Um, and of course I say that now and, uh, we will, <laughs> I have jinxed myself. All right. So while we wait for that, let me just jump to your new comment here and then we'll go back. Uh, William says gold three finished on gold leaderboard last season, played five games at the start of the season and lost all to max cards. Okay. I'll let the shake on come back later. Played five today at gold three, same result. Yeah. Well, you know, this is. This is going to be, uh, huh? This, this is what I've said before. There's no casual players here, right? There's there's no there's nobody that wants to play at like the lower levels, and with the kind of like rating inflation that we have now, you're always going to be going up against um, 
you know players with with higher level decks so i don't know i don't know what else to say man uh like you're right it's it's not the best if you are playing if you were playing in like bronze and silver before uh or even low gold your experience i'm sure is not fantastic uh what do we want to do here All right, we're playing life, that's for sure, because I want this dude in the reach spot. Um, the thing is, he can still get hit. And... I want to go for some speed, need for speed. So let's throw you in the mix here. I think we're still gonna do blights just because I like blight. But now, oh, you know what? We're gonna throw him into the mix because he can benefit when he gets up, up top. And then, you know what? I'm so, man. All right, I'm gonna throw Coral Lurker into the mix. I only have a level one. And the reason for this is, is anybody with scatter shot doesn't matter, but anybody who would be attacking him, so if they have any like sneak or opportunity, uh, would be melee. And so let's try this. I'm wondering if I missed out by not doing dragon, but oh, I maxed out some cards yesterday. Uh, finally bought some new ones. So uh, I, I maxed out, I believe, my Thaddeus Brood. And then I bought enough to max out my Astral Entity. So got my, my Death Cards up in the mix. Uh, or Death Summoners, I should say. Uh, in fact, I should go I should go max out Astral Entity now. Because I, I think I, I bought enough to do it. But then I had one that was rented out. So I took it off of rental. And we'll see how that shakes out. Okay. While well, we're waiting, oh, never mind. We're not waiting any longer. Ah, oh, there's probably not going to be. Ah, oh, there's no sneaker opportunity. That sucks. Okay, we do have. Ugh. Well, now Lurker feels like a waste. Okay, that helps ish. No, not really. I think we lost. Yep. There you go. Damn. Um, let's see. Where am I trending at? 106 and 206. So I'm I'm pretty close to that 50% win rate. Uh, I went on a major losing streak yesterday, going from like mid diamond three down to mid diamond, mid gold one uh where they at where they at where they at well, there they are so i still need to get a couple more summoners but it's nice to have astral entity uh in the mix now and you know astral entity was regular or relatively cheap six bucks Compared to some of the other ones, I think Lily's still trading about like 10. Oh, that feels good. But Astral is one of my favorites to play when there's no magic. Uh, okay, let's do Modern and let's do Owned. So, at this point in time, the only ones that I'm missing... I need Yasik. That, that's one that I really, really need. I don't generally like to play Grandmaster Wraith. So it's like, even though I'm close, it's like last on the list for me. Uh, I do have Immortalis. I have Possibilis. So Yasik is probably the next one that I want just because I love playing, the, you know, the speed meta there. And then, of course, I want Lily, but I need five Lilies. And these things are going for. Yeah, they're still at 10 bucks. So I would need to burn like all my Gladiator cards <laughs> if I wanted them. All right, come on. I want to get a win here. So let's try this again. Uh, 
Now, while we're waiting, Wilson, I expected some pullback and had some USDC to buy and just went higher. Yeah, I'm the future of Barcelona. Any watch the whales thing with aggro? I think several people saw it already. Uh, it comes out here on Apple TV in two days, I think, on March 11th. So that's exciting. You know, I haven't seen it in the coming soon on Apple. I wonder if they're just not pushing it there, but... At this rate of GST pumping, you might want to consider putting on those sneakers again. I don't mind. If, oh, what? Really? GST's pumping? Wait a second. I have not been following what they've been doing. The thing is, I need it. Like, I need like a comfort gem or something because like my my shoe is unusable now, or something like that. And I, I'm only, I only have sneakers on the Solana ecosystem. But damn, look at that! It's at eight cents. what it's up 50 percent. okay time to put my sneakers on yo this is crazy all right time to dust off uh the stepping app i think i'll go for a walk today do you know why this is pumping i i'm not like even in the discord i haven't been following oh holy crap what happened All right. Well, I still own three sneakers. So um, I just haven't done anything with them. Walking keys is in the house. What's going on, brother? Icy flow. I played one game on an alt in bronze modern. Wrecked you play the first game using max level cards. They haven't played since. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I saw I saw you mention that on uh, Mav chat earlier today. Congrats on the max cards. That is an ongoing goal of mine. I mean, I'm not trying to get every card maxed. I want the summoners max because I'm... Oh, look at this. See, I told you I was going to jinx it. Um, I want the summoners max because I figure, you know, between the reward cards, soulbound reward cards for chaos, and then when the soulbound reward cards for uh, the next set, right, Rebellion go live over the summer, I should be able to... I should be able to field decent teams. Um, wow. All right. Well, you know what? There you go. Now, here, here's the video evidence for it. There's nobody playing this game. <laughs> Time to move over to parallel, which I'm so sad. Oh, I just want to just just need the time to play that game more. Need, need time to play all these games more. The thing is, okay, so as I look ahead to this month, you know what I think I'm going to need to do? I mean, weekend streams are good. But I'm almost thinking, like, I'm going to have to pivot and do some evening streams as well. Or more evening streams. Just because my days can be unpredictable at times. And over the next month, between now and when is the Bitcoin having? Let's check. Bitcoin having 2024. Uh, where's like the. Isn't there a website that's constantly tracking it? Bitcoin having countdown. I swear to God, if this says that I like surrendered from a battle, I'll be so pissed. I'm going to refresh now and see what happens. Nothing. What happened? Did I lose energy? Oh, I didn't get the message. We'll try again. All right, here, here we go. Bitcoin having countdown. It is, man, it keeps moving up. Blocks are going fast. Uh, April 15th, 2024. So we are just over a month away, 36 days. So what's my schedule like over the next 36 days? Uh, it's going to be busy. Hey, look at that. We found a game. All you got to do is refresh, guys. Okay, whenever you can't find a game, just hit refresh. All you 
your problems will be solved. Oh boy. What is this? Oops, that's not what I wanted to press. Um, I kind of want to go with this and just throw big boy in the mix. Trying to play with as many max cards as possible. Now, what's interesting is I could throw Chaos Agent. You know what? Perfect. We're going to throw Chaos Agent into the mix, <clears throat> which means we're actually going to be attracting a lot of attention here, both from the sneak and snipe positions as well, as well as opportunity, right? No, opportunity is going to go after your Reyes, but you know what? That's fine. I can live with that. But check this out. I'm playing all max cards. It feels kind of nice. I guess I am in diamond now, so. But you know, the, these these leaves are not gonna mean much in the future. It's gonna be like uh it's just gonna be an aesthetic, right? A metal, like, oh yeah, what uh, you know, what league did you make it to? Not what league do you play in? Hold on, I'm gonna open up a Apple TV on my phone. Cause I, I I tend to watch a decent amount on Apple TV. They have some great programming. And I'm trying to see here. They usually have like coming soon. Future releases. So it is not anywhere that I can see it. In like the featured section. And this goes all the way out to like the summer. But if I hit the coming to Apple TV button, dude, it's not even there. Are we sure that this is going to happen? Apple TV plus. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll check it on Monday again. <clears throat> ah. Okay. Now this is interesting. I think I win this because we got the sneak and, um, we're going to take out that cleanse in the back relatively easily. Wow. They did not miss on Chaos Agent at all, which is disappointing. Ooh, and that stun is going to be a problem. But now they're... Now they're done. Now I just need to work my way through. There we go. We got the poison. Guardian is gone. Oh, and we got more poisons. Dude, we're just. This is like a Waka team at this point. Let's go. Okay. When are we gonna get unstunned? Is the question. Oh, damn. That's a, uh, it's a knockout rule set. Oh, that sucks. I was hoping we do a little bit better. Oh, it's okay. You never like to see Bakjira go down, right? He's just such a big boy. But GG's winning 5.8 SPS here in low diamond. It's not too bad. Let's check the leaderboard now. Where is... All right, so people are 5,300. Yo, holy moly. Look at this. They are way ahead of everybody else. Look, but see, okay, this is exactly what I wanted. Look at the amount of games that they have put in. And now they're at the top. You get 24 games per season. Times, uh, we'll say like 15 days. That's 360 games. Meaning that at this point, right, we were at what? Uh, we'll just say 10 times 24. Anybody who's above 240 games has been paying for energy. So Cavantes, shout out to Mondra. Look at Mondra killing it without having to <laughs> pay for any extra energy. Um, so Cavantes, Truels, uh, wasn't there someone else? Sim, Sim Sahas, there you go. Angel with a shoddy. Yasik. So you know what this represents to me? This, okay. 
this is fantastic for the ecosystem as a whole because as they chase these leaderboard positions and play more, they are burning DEC and or vouchers. And that is a net benefit to the entire ecosystem. And I don't care what you guys say. I mean, the truth is the truth. Whales are always going to dominate this, right? Whales are always going to move it in one direction or another. It was the whales that burned like most of the DEC during the, um, well, during DECB, when DECB was created, as well as during the Great Burning event last year. All right, I'm feeling good. I, I kind of want to go for 10 chests today. I have a lot of energy, actually. I should be using that up. So Vilson saying, um, dump everything. It's pumping because everything on Solana is. William says to Keys, aren't you at all hesitant about maxing your deck knowing when CL rotates out, they will lose more value? Um, you know, I can't speak for Keys, William, uh, but I can speak for myself in the sense that, like, I like playing the game. And um, to me, I, you know, I, I, I've said this many times. I don't look at cards as like investments. Uh, so when I buy cards and I, it's, it's for my deck, right? It's cards that I want to use and the value and utility that they have for me is for me to have a better experience and be, to be able to play at higher levels, both now and even potentially in the future, if that's wild. Uh, so no, I don't, I, I never look at the, the value of my overall collection. I know people track that regularly, but when it comes to being a player, I, I play the game. When it comes to being an investor, that stuff is all completely separate for me. Uh, and I don't invest in cards. But maybe Keys feels differently. Mm. This seems like a fantastic game for Ilthane, but I only have a level 2 Ilthane. So I think what we're going to do is quicks uh, just to try and mitigate some of that. And then I don't think there's any headwinds. Oh, there is. I just don't have the card. <laughs> okay, we're still going to put Conjurer up front because... Because. Um, we're going to go with Naga Assassin. I don't think there's anybody that has blind... And you know, I I fully expect to go up against uh, this. To me, would be like a perfect game for what's his name, Grim Bardoon Smith. I should consider getting him up to level, I don't know, four or five, whatever it is. Um, you know what? I am gonna throw Venari Muskrat in because if they have a Conjurer as well. I want that snare in there. And then I have six mana to do what with? I don't want another. Well, mm. you know what? We're going to put portal spinner in the mix, even though it's not, it's like only level five. And I guess I'm going to martyr up chaos agent to hope that they Uh, okay, see, I thought about the strategy too. I'm kind of glad that I went non-magic then. So we'll see how this shakes out. This is fascinating that they, the placement, the placement was weird. Why would you put that there? Because you can't heal him in the taunt in, in the second position. I mean, we're about to go flawless victory on this thing. Holy moly, that was amazing. Beautiful. Well, look at that. I just made uh, 15 cents. Ish. Actually, more than 15 cents. Now, what are the players at the highest levels making again? You see Cavante's battle. Uh, tournament, 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 tournament. Ranked. 
12.1 SPS. 12.4, 12.1. All right, I'm, I'll be curious to see if this starts to go up over time. Slowly and steadily, but you know, 12 SPS, that's not bad guys. I mean, I know it's like what, 36 cents. It probably doesn't make sense from an energy standpoint the way that it used to, right? Because 500 DEC for energy, 50 cents. Although actually, hold up, playing, how much does energy cost for me right now? Uh, let's do this as DECB first. So one energy cost 250 DEC. So that is 25 cents. And I just made 15 cents on that win. But you change this to vouchers and it costs 2.5 vouchers now. So that's 12 and a half cents. So this is why vouchers have so much more value right now. Dude, this is fantastic. I, you know, this is this is probably gonna be a game changer for vouchers, guys. This is the ongoing utility that we needed. I mean, yes, do I want it to go to DEC for the flywheel? Absolutely. But it's kind of crazy. Because with vouchers at five cents, right? That's 12 and a half cents. It even makes sense for me now. And with vouchers uh, for people at the higher levels, right? Vouchers at five cents and you would need... Uh, my assumption would be whatever, what, uh, oh, five, five vouchers. So it'd be, it'd be double this. So you need five vouchers. That's 25 cents, but people who are making 12 SPS per win are getting 36 cents per game. So it actually still makes sense there, man. We should be burning way more vouchers. Should be keyword. Bitcoin six is playing some star Atlas going to get some mining in dope. All right. Oh, why is this frozen now? I can't remove this comment. Oh, page unresponsive. There we go. All right. I think we're going to, oh man, we've been on for an hour already. We're probably going to hop off soon. All right, so Walking Keys playing the new season of Fortnite after a morning of thrift store shopping. Let's go, man. Walking Keys, you're my hero. So William says, do I plan on playing in wild with those cards? Um, with the cards that I just bought? No, I'm, I'm only buying modern cards right now. Uh, but my point earlier was that, you know, I'm buying Chaos Legion cards because I want to play with them, at least, you know, max level summoners. And no matter what, even when Chaos rotates over to Wild, I'll still be able to play with them and play at, uh, you know, maybe not the highest levels from a skill and collection standpoint, but I will have max level cards. Or sorry, max level summoners, which means that if I just collect all of the Soulbound reward cards over time, if I decide not to spend another penny on Rebellion or any other card in the future, um... I'll still be able to have fun with it. It is what it is. Or it is what it is. All right. looks like my internet's being all weird right now. So we can start to wrap up. Is there anything else that you guys want to chat about? Um, the list of games that I want or need to check out is growing by the day. And, uh, and my time is actually dwindling faster than I'd like it to. Free time, I should say. That, that sounded a little morbid. Thankfully, I think I'm all right. I, th I think, you know, I, I know people are, are being somewhat bearish now, saying we're in a bull trap or that there's going to be a retracement. I, I don't doubt that there will be. Um, I think it'd be weird if it, if it was just straight up into the right. Uh, that being said, though, I think we've hit a point where there's enough breathing room that a lot of these games or AI projects or, you know, whatever other narratives that tend to pop up can really flourish over the summer. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the summer at this point. 
and maybe even like pre-summer, right? Like this all this all could really start to look interesting post having, even if Bitcoin doesn't do anything post having. All right, so I need to check out the Immutable X stuff. A lot of people are very bullish on ETH Layer 2s right now, thinking that they're about to take off. I mean, the thing is, it's already $300 million market cap. Is there a ETH Layer 2? You know what? I think it's actually... I, I think it's actually coin market cap that's eating up so much memory for me. Let's go to CoinGecko. Yeah, see, this is just so much faster and smoother. All right, so you have Optimism here sitting about $300 million market cap. Uh, where's Arbitrum? Arbitrum sitting at, oh, I'm sorry, three, oh, damn it. All right, so Arbitrum is actually lower. It's sitting at $3 billion market cap. I was looking at uh, volume. Optimism is sitting at $4.6 billion. And then where's Base at? Oh, Base is not here. The thing is, actually, I there's no need for like why would you even need the base token? Like I'm able to the thing is I'm able to completely operate on base without needing a base token. I don't even know what this does. Okay. Uh because there's enough like ETH on base, you just use that for any transaction fees. Okay, uh, Wilson says, I hope for a pullback. Plato's gonna head out. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for coming through. I think we're gonna end it here anyway, Plato. So perfect timing. Um, all right, guys. So I will not be able to stream tomorrow. Uh, there is a good chance that I I won't be able to stream at all this upcoming week until next Sunday, which should be exciting. Um, because I think we're going to have like March Madness and stuff go live at some point. So I don't know anybody who's into Ma March Madness, but you know, we're going to do something fun here on the stream for March Madness. I think, uh, I don't know. I, I love it. So if you guys are, are into it as well, we'll probably do some, uh, some buy-ins for that. have some, um, have some tournaments as well on stream so lots to look forward to later this month uh i will keep my i'll do my best to keep the content coming regularly if i can't do streams so thanks guys for for watching the videos and leaving comments there that's always fun for me um but other than that guys have an amazing rest of your day of your weekend uh i will try to catch up with you all very very soon and um yeah hopefully nothing but good things are headed our way peace